Hi everybody, uh, my name is Justin. So um, I love sugar. Sugar is one of my favorite things. And um, I'm sure that many of you also enjoy sugar. And you know the saying, if it's too good to be true, then it is. Well, that's the situation we're all faced with today in today's consumer society. And we're all exposed to media advertising, therefore we're constantly seeing, smelling, and eating processed foods which are relatively cheap and taste great, but are high in sugar and or high fructose corn syrup. Which leads me to my main claim, which is the amount of sugar and fructose added to processed foods is causing widespread health issues. Uh, I'll be discussing first how the United States residents consume a large amount of sugar and high fructose corn syrup, second, how high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects mental health, and third, how high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects your nutrition. So according to the USDA.gov, America's sweet tooth increased 39% between 1950 and 2000 as use of corn sweeteners octupled. In the 1950s, the amount of high fructose corn syrup used in the U.S. was zero pounds per capita, and by the year 2000, it was at 63.8 pounds per capita, and that's a huge increase. Now, U.S. researchers at the Pennington Biomedical Research Center at Louisiana State University examined the relationship between high fructose corn syrup consumption and the development of obesity by analyzing U.S. Department of Agricultural Food Consumption Tables from 1967 to 2000. Now, among their findings, they found that the average body weight of Americans rose slowly from 1900 to the late 1980s, at which point the average began to climb sharply. Consumption of high fructose corn syrup increased more than 1,000% from 1970 to 1990, and the increased consumption of high fructose corn syrup far exceeds the changes in intake of any other food or food group. Next, I'll be talking about how high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects mental health. Well, sugar decreases normal brain functions. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor is responsible for the, develop, for the development of new brain tissue. If you don't have this chemical in your brain, your brain wouldn't develop properly and you would die very soon after birth. BDNF helps to create new neurons or nerve tissue, and therefore new memories. According to Dr. Scott Olson, a well-known nutritionist, research has shown that high sugar diets decrease BDNF. In fact, the relationship between BDNF and sugar is even more interesting. Low amounts of it actually lead to insulin resistance and even diabetes. Low BDNF has also been associated with depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, and schizophrenia. Next I'll be talking about how sugar and fructose increase, increases depression and anxiety. Have you ever eaten a sugar item and after felt a little depressed, irritated, or even a little anxious? According to Dr. Scott Olson, sugar, consum sugar consumption in population studies has been shown to have a close link with major depression. Researchers suggest that the sugar and brain association may be due to the stress that sugar causes when we eat it. Anxiety, too, has also been closely linked with sugar, with sugar use in a number of different studies. Last, I'll be talking about how the high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects nutrition. Now, first, I'll talk about how sugar causes acne. Uh, high sugar intake has a detrimental effect on our skin, causes poor immunity, intoxication, and inflammation, which all cause acne. According to nutritionist Su Lin Z, when there's an abnormally high presence of refined foods in the diet over a long period of time, the ability of your body to correctly manage glucose becomes impaired. The body's been on a roller coaster ride for too long. This makes you prone to develop an insulin resistance, which causes acne. <coughs> insulin resistance mismanages sugar, increases fat deposits, and raises testosterone production. Last time we talk about how fructose found in sugar given us in massive doses is actually dangerous. Sugar is very addictive, and a high intake causes higher cravings. According to Dr. Joseph Mercola, a lead nutritionist, glucose is the form of energy you were designed to run on. Every cell in your body, every bacterium, and in fact, every living thing on the earth uses glucose for energy. But as a country, sucrose is no longer the sugar of choice. Now it's fructose. Making matters worse, all the fibers have been removed from processed foods, so there's essentially no nutritive value anymore. And the very product most people rely on to lose weight, which is the low-fat diet foods, are often the ones highest in fructose. It isn't that fructose itself is bad, it's the massive doses that we're exposed to. So, we talked about how United States residents consume a large amount of sugar and high fructose corn syrup, high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects mental health, and how high sugar and fructose intake negatively affects your nutrition. And I hope that from the speech, the next time that you go to get a soda from McDonald's or eat a piece of candy, you know, you actually think of the effects it has on our bodies. Thank you.
All right. Well, you clearly state the proposition. You have an excellent layout of what the subpoints are going to be. Your internal labeling is pretty clear. So the structural stuff is good. Uh, the supporting information, you've got a lot of information. I, uh, I'm not exactly sure if the uh, term is BDF or if it's a name, and I'm, I'm just missing it because of the way you're saying it or rushing through it. So it's a little confusing there. I think you need to have uh, some more explanation because that's an important uh, link in the argument that you're making on the first point. Uh, you've got a lot of statistical information about the consumption of high fructose corn syrup, uh, and you talk about the shift from sucrose to fructose as our primary uh, source of sweetening. And if it's if it's if it doesn't matter what which type of sugar it is, it's only the amount that we're talking about. Then there needs to be a little bit more discussion about why those amounts have increased so much. Uh, you suggest at one point that it's because of the addictive nature of sugar. I didn't really hear any proof on the addictive part of uh, sugar. Uh, there might be more controversy in suggesting that uh, sugar is being added to products excessively or that uh, we're creating an expectation that products are going to taste a particular way by putting sugar in them and, so, and, that, and that's kind of what creates the demand for the sugar. It becomes its own self-fulfilling prophecy there. Uh, but we don't get much explanation of that. I think uh, on the third point, you're awfully dependent on the relationship between sugar and acne to show that there's some relationship here. And I'm not, I'm not sure that in the long run uh, that that point is as clearly developed as it needs to be. Your presentation issues, you're kind of rushing through the material. You've got a minute and a half still, so you don't have to go quite as fast. And uh, your eye contact's a little bit inconsistent also. All right. And you're going to give me outline stuff as you're walking out the door, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all.